Hey guys, Wintermute here, and today I'll be making a low-poly version of one of the most well-known uh, FPS maps of all time, Dust2. Now, I'm going to be using Blender 2.82 to do this, um, which is the newest release, which is pretty cool. Um, but you can use anything from Blender 2.8 up to, if you want to follow along. So, I have a couple of references uh, that I just downloaded off the internet, and I'm just going to be following those. I'll start by making the floor with a quad and then subdividing it um, with loop cuts, just so I can extend it out to match the shape of the floor. It's always good to use a, a top-down map for this as a good reference, um, and I'll be only working on the B site um, at this point. So right now I'm sort of tracing the outline of the map. I don't want to use a reference image um, just because I want to work on my ability to do this visually, but if you do want to use a reference image you can always add one, though you'll probably have to search up a tutorial since the way of doing that has changed. I'm going to extrude the outline of the walls up a little bit and uh, or sorry, the floor up a bit so I have some walls, and I'm going to add bevels in the corners which I think should be rounded. Um, and then I can do some smaller fine manipulations on the walls, and then I will have the correct um, angles of, along the edges. I also have this pathway thing at the back which I have to make, um, and this is also connected to stairs which may become a problem at a point, but we'll worry about that later. So let's with this block out, let's start with putting the boxes where they should be. Uh, now I only realized after recording that that one box in that corner is actually two boxes stacked on top of each other, which I will fix. Um, and basically I'm just looking at the map and I'm seeing where these boxes are and their orientation relative to um, say the x-axis. I'll use longer boxes for props like a car and I'll just try to make sure everything is in the correct orientation. I don't need to worry about detail right now because we're just trying to get a sense of position and scale of where to put stuff. There's also a raised element and so I'm going to select all the faces which are slightly higher up and I'm going to raise them above the ground. Now don't extrude this because it's going to mess up the geometry under your model. Just select the faces and just um, hit G and pull them up. You can add a couple more edge loops to uh, fix the orientation of stuff. Um, and you should also look at multiple different perspectives um, while managing your references. This wall segment is probably not a good idea to raise up from the ground mesh, so what I'm going to do later is I'm going to separate this. And the geometry in the corner is also a bit messed up, um, so I'm going to delete that face and just replace it with uh, tries. So this is more of me just trying to place all the boxes in the correct uh, locations. Let's try to make keep uh, a sense of scale. If you had a human reference, you could just make like a cylinder or something and stretch it to like a meter tall or two meters tall, and then um, just use that as a reference or player height, which you can use to modify uh, to scale the rest of your blocks. Um, so I'm gonna raise the walls now just so this is a bit more accurate because there's a hole in the top um, of the boxes in the corner uh, which I'm editing right now so I'll need to add that detail into the actual wall structure and I'll just carve it out like that now one of the advantages of using quads as the bottom is that as the uh, floor is that you can loop cut pretty freely and you don't have to worry about um, not being able to subdivide the floor in case you want to extrude something out of it or offset it slightly. Cylinders can stand in for barrels pretty well um, and there's not too much work that needs to be done with those just the positioning and the scaling uh, needs to be done properly. You can always look at a reference image for the correct orientation as you can see me doing in the bottom left corner. Now there are these three boxes at the very back hallway. Um, one is just pretty much rotated 90 degrees off the other one, so that's all you really have to do, and they're about half as big as the one in the back. 
Now you don't have to worry too much about the geometry in the back, um, mostly because you won't really see it in this final render, but it's a good idea to have it. Now you can hit um, the backslash if you want to go into single edit mode or single user mode I think, um, which will just let you focus on a single mesh. So I just picked a cube and then I'm going to convert that into a more detailed car model. And then I just hit backslash and then I will have this thing only in focus. I just added a couple of loop cuts and I can make faces where necessary in order to um, in order to create the window dividers and I can also remove faces to create the windows. I don't need to worry about glass textures and stuff like that or glass shaders because that's not super important in a low poly model. I'm going to add the wheels just roughly in the correct location. Uh, you can just duplicate them and move them around. And I'll just try to get the general scale of the car right. One other important thing, which um, I'm not sure if I did here, is that you should parent the wheels by control P to the car structure, just so that we have we can move all of it at once and we don't have to select all of it. Um, and we can just select the car body and we'll move the wheels as well. So now for lighting, I want to be I want there to be a, a very sharp contrast between uh, the shadowed areas and the lit areas. So I'm just going to set up a single sun lamp and I'm going to turn down the size. Uh, the size, uh, a high size for a sun lamp will give you, or any lamp in general, um, a high size will give you fuzzier shadows, uh, whereas a smaller size or a smaller angle will give you more sharper shadows. And I rather have the sharp, uh, the sharp shadows in this scene, so I'm going to stick with those. Also, we can see a lot of uh, scattering when we do this. Um, so I'm going to go into Eevee later, and I'm going to change that renderer, um, just so we have a bit less scattering. And we can have a lot stronger contrast with areas of almost full dark and full bright. I'll add a solidify modifier to the walls, just so they have a bit of depth. And I'll try to position the camera in a reasonable place. Now it's kind of hard to get the orientation right. You really just have to play around with it and see what happens. But yeah, this looks like a not too unreasonable recreation of dust. But we're going to take this a little bit further. The freestyle, uh, the freestyle option is enabled just so we have the outlines. And I'm going to move into Eevee and I'm going to turn on screen space reflections just so we have those cool looking uh, glassy reflections at the bottom. Um, and I'm also going to uh, turn on Bloom just to see what that looks like, and since it's a bit too strong, I'm going to remove it. Uh, I'm going to try to make this hallway, but it turns out that lighting this structure is pretty difficult, and uh, I'm going to remove it in the end. Uh, since Eevee doesn't do real-time uh, ray tracing and rather does a lot of pretty cool shortcuts in the lighting engine um, in order to be able to dis be displayed in real time, um, sometimes the lights don't work very well and you'll have to turn on contact shadows and change some of the settings there in order to make it work properly. Um, I don't know if there's an exact method for that and you'll probably just have to play around with it. Uh, here's the part where the solidify modifier can make it a bit difficult. So, um, it's often difficult with the solidify modifier to add extrusions as what's going to happen is that parts of those extrusions, um, if they're thin, will get extruded outwards where the solidify will go um, perpendicular to that and it's just going to make a segment that sticks out which is really bad. Again, we're just doing more loop cuts and more pulling vertices around just to make a good looking structure. Uh, unfortunately, we can't scale this wall part both backwards and forwards, so we only have um, this top part of the wall sticking out towards the interior of the map. Now since we do have the solidify modifier, uh, we can take advantage of that and we can make pillars by just extruding edges upwards as opposed to faces since they'll be given extra thickness. And I'll try to make these kind of uniform, but uh, in the map they're not super uniform anyways, so I can just leave it like this. And then we want to have the central archway. 
So I can just make some more loop cuts and drag them up, just so I have just so I have a more uh, accurate looking image. Now I'm going to make the doors. So first I'll start with the normal door shape, and then I'm going to split it in the middle with the V key, which will rip the edge, basically making it a separate edge. I'm going to keep on adding loop cuts. Um, if you want to make them flat, all you have to do is do S, Z, 0, and that will set the Z scale to 0, which is basically something that's flat. And I'm going to make these borders so that I can apply a slightly different material to them. And I can also extrude these out, though I will inset them first so they don't um, like clip out the edge. Alright, now I'm going to select all these faces later, just because it's going to be a pain to do um, when we're actually texturing it. Um, I'm going to add a vertex group and assign it to the bars, so that I can use that later when I want to apply a slightly darker material to them. And I'm going to move the uh, door to the correct position, and I'm also going to move the origin to the hinge, because that's where we want it to rotate around. So right now the origin's in the middle, we'll just drag everything out to the hinge, um, first adding a mirror modifier. Alright, so now it's the origin is centered at the hinge. Now we can just modify the arch shape to fit the door, just from a side view. And we want to make it pretty symmetrical, so we have both doors, and we're just going to modify that arch continually. It doesn't have to be a perfect fit, doesn't really matter because the doors are open anyways. And we also want to part at we also want to see outside the doors, we don't want it to just turn into a black void. So I'm going to make um, just a slight extrusion outwards. Just a, a bit of an L shape just to catch that shadow. We'll keep the background color as just pure black because I don't want any ambient lighting. Um, and I'll just add a bit of the decals. So this B site, um, this B site spray, I guess. I'm going to give this a low poly looking font, uh, which is Halogen by Pixel Surplus. That you can find it online, just search it up. Give it a bit of extrude. I'm just going to mount it on the wall. There's also a white square behind it, so I'm just going to add that on top. Now, I'm not going to do this through texturing, I'm just going to make physical meshes for it because one, that's easier, and two, I think it fits the low poly style a bit better too. We're going to smooth out this top part a bit, um, still with the SZ0 technique, um, just to flatten it. And yeah, we have our model right here. Uh, now we're almost done. I just want to change the lighting a little bit so we have a bit more uh, ambient light through the middle because we can't see too much in the way of details. So I have a sun lamp positioned at the front and one at the back. Now this cube, I'm going to add a bit of thickness to it by just loop cutting it, tilting it, and extruding that loop cut out. And I'm just going to make some more minor modifications to the geometry here. We're just working towards a more detailed model. These are more placeholders for things that don't actually exist right now. Here's an easy way to make an X. We just make a circle, um, and we make, we join two of the faces, and we join the other faces to them. And then we place it in the middle. Uh, we want to extrude it up a bit so you can actually see it, and we want to half embed it in the floor. We'll do the same uh, box thickness thing by just making a tilted section and extruding it outwards. Just pulling it up a little bit so it looks slightly more like the original version. And I'll just make these walls kind of uh, look inwards. I'm going to add an irradiance volume here. What this does is let uh, lets EV pre-compute some light bounces. However, I think that makes the whole scene look a bit too bright, so I'm just going to end up removing it later. I think I like the darker contrast a lot better.
I'm going to do the same box thickening thing with this, one in the back, and I'm just going to modify the light strength a little bit. Having too many lights in the scene can often make it confusing, so you should try to avoid that. Um, also, you don't want your lights to be the same intensities because that's going to be kind of confusing to look at. You kind of, you generally want a really strong fill light, and then something um, which would fill up sort of the the highlighted parts, and then we want sort of a backlight just to fill in the parts that are a bit more in shadow. We can play with a rotation just to match the shadow angle as seen in the reference photos. And yeah, that's our model. So next time we'll be texturing this and doing some more fun stuff with detail. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye.